What's up guys, we're back with a brand new video. Today we're gonna take a break from Halo Infinite and talk about all the new updates we're getting on the Master Chief Collection. So as usual, let's jump right in. The biggest headline for this new update is Flood Fight, a variation of ODST Firefight with the Flood. We'll be able to fight waves of Flood in Firefight, which is something we've never been able to do in an official Halo game before. The update will also come with overall networking improvements for a better gameplay experience. A common issue where enemies would get stuck and were unable to find players have been solved as well. So let's jump into the details and see what's actually new. We'll be able to use the visor map to see enemy locations now, just like in the ODST campaign. We'll also be able to use the energy sword and the sentinel beam which is something we were never able to do on the original ODST game. Now, the Flood enemies won't just be a replacement to the Covenant, they will bring a whole different kind of vibe. Anytime they appear as enemies, they'll be accompanied by a dense fog, giving the mission a dynamic and spooky ambiance. The Flood will now be able to occupy vehicles, just like they did in Halo 2, and we'll also see the return of Flood pure forms such as the Stalkers or the Range forms. New weapon racks, or boons as they're referred to, will be placed on the map containing weapons like the AR or BR to mix up encounters. Again, these weapons are something that were never in the original ODST, so it's going to be exciting to play around them in the ODST sandbox. Some of the maps will also have flamethrowers available, while others will have friendly marines, and MPD officers, or even friendly elite AIs to accompany you. I gotta warn you though, your allies and even your co-op teammates can be infected by the flood. Some other updates we will get will be related to the UI. We will now be able to preview firefight voices just like the original Halo Reach did. Do I look like an ammo bank to you? Did you miss me? What are you looking at? 343 has also updated and redesigned numerous icons for a fresh look as well as fixed some of the performance issues on the main menu and pause menus. I didn't think the icons needed to be changed but you know, <laughs> whatever, they, they look good. And now we can get into the part with the most potential for MCC's longevity, the customs game browser. Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary and Halo 4 will now be added to the customs game browser for even more variety on custom games. I personally had a blast playing customs the other day. These three games are my personal favorite in the collection, so I'm really happy to see them be a part of the customs game browser. They've also added support for automatic team changing, which allows for game hosts to avoid manual team changes in favor of automatically evening teams out when a new match begins. I know, that's a mouthful. I don't know why they worded it like that. Basically, the game will automatically balance teams if they're uneven. On the campaign side, I know one of the bigger issues people have had with MCC is lack of campaign crossplay. Fortunately, at least Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST will be getting campaign crossplay with this new update. It's not clear if the other games will receive the same support. From personal experience, I know Halo 2 is extremely wonky when you play it on co-op like right now, so I have no idea what effect crossplay will have on it. Halo 4's campaign will be getting multiplayer customization, just like what we have for Halo CE and Halo 3 right now. You can even trade weapons with your allies and still see your skin applied on those guns. I don't believe the skins stay when you trade weapons with marines in Halo 3, but I might be wrong, I don't know. Speaking of Halo 3, since the game's trying to reunify the medals across the games, Halo 3 will be getting an additional 51 medals. Of course, as with most things in MCC, if you're more of a purist, you can always toggle the new medals off if you wish. Monthly challenges will now be called tactical exercises and will grant you points which you can spend in the exchange store to unlock new armor and customization items. The current seasonal challenges will shift to a 28 day cadence and award XP or points that you can spend in existing tiers for any previous seasons or the exchange store to unlock new armor or customization items. Honestly, not too much of a difference here. Basically, seasonal challenges will just shift to a monthly challenge and that's pretty much it. Alright, so with all these updates, what can we expect in the future? The teams aim to add mod support and Steam Workshop for all the remaining Halo games, with Halo 3 ODST probably coming first. They also have some leftover customization content from previous season releases, and we will most likely be seeing them in the near future. 
campaign collectible MOAs will be added across all the remaining Halo games. If you guys aren't aware, they're currently only available in Halo 3. Post-match customization will be coming in the form of poses in the post-game carnage report. The poses will support both Spartans and Elites, so fear not my dino friends. I remember this was in a flight build before Infinite came out, but I guess it's still not stable enough to be released yet. And there we have it folks. What are you guys most excited about with this new MCC update? Will you be jumping back onto MCC to try these new features? If you guys enjoyed the video, RKO that like button and subscribe for more Halo content. It always helps me out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe to Captain Charisma.